Okay, we saw on the weather, the snow on the way. So we packed everything up, cold gear and everything, came rushing up here to the Lake District. Not a snowflake in sight. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Absolutely bitterly cold, but no snow. And yet where I come from, which is about an hour down the road, uh, middle of nowhere, just outskirts of Preston, we had snow last night. Anyway, uh, we're talking about cold weather. What can you do? Why does your car lose so much of its efficiency and range in the winter? Is there anything you can do to stop it? Is there anything you can do to help yourself so that it isn't such a big difference between summer and winter? And the answer is yes, and you're going to learn how on this video. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. So in the winter, we have very specific challenges, and that is really bitterly cold. And the cold affects all cars, not just EVs. It affects petrol and diesel cars as well. But they're very different. They handle it in a different way. So let's have a look at what's going on with EVs. Now, EVs we have obviously inside, well, underneath, a massive big battery. And a battery, as I've said, is just a chemical reaction. There are various chemicals in there, and when they react together, they produce electricity. And that reaction, as in every reaction in the chemical world, every reaction proceeds faster and more efficiently when it's nice and warm or hot, and goes very much slower and less efficiently when it's cold. So turning the stored energy from a battery into electricity in the summer, when that's nice and warm, is really efficient. And that's why you get your maximum range in the summer. This is working efficiently. The whole car is working efficiently. Everything's fine. When we come to the winter, we have two challenges. First of all, the battery drops in efficiency. Does the same on ice cars, by the way. That's why they're often more difficult to start in the winter, because your battery that starts your engine is also less efficient, and there are more battery replacements for petrol and diesel cars in the winter than there are in the summer, much higher load. So the first problem we have is the battery is cold, and when it's cold, it's not very efficient, and it won't give full power. So you, that's your first problem. The second problem is, while it's producing less power more slowly, we're asking it to do a lot more. Yeah, it's still driving the car, but in the winter, we'll probably have the headlights on. We might have windscreen wipers going. We might have the heated rear windscreen going, and we, might, we will have the heater inside working very much harder. So we ask the car to use more electricity in the winter, and yet the battery is working less efficiently and producing slightly less electricity. And that's why we get this range problem. Now, the answer to all of this starts before you even set off from home. And that is, charge up your vehicle overnight. In the cold weather, you will use more energy. So the first thing is, make sure when you go off on a journey, your car is actually charged and you don't set off with a very low charge. If you've got cheap overnight electricity uh, from your utility supplier, use it. In the winter, I tend to keep my car very much higher state of charge than I do in the summer because I know I've got less range. So that's point number one, keep your battery fully, fully charged or as charged as you want to do it. I never take mine up to 100%, uh, 85, 90 is the maximum I'll ever do, but I will keep it 85 or 90 in the winter, without a doubt. So traditionally, we've had the ice dance. This is where people in the morning will come out of their house and they will get their keys and they'll jump into their ice cars and they'll be frozen solid and they will put the key in, start the engine, shut the door and head back inside at a rapid rate of knots because it's so cold. And then you'll see line after line of petrol and diesel cars down the road with fumes coming out, steam coming out of the back while they wait for their cars to get up to a sensible temperature where they can actually get in it without freezing their bombs. We don't have that problem. Ice cars have got over that. So we have a totally different way, EV drivers, of handling that ice dance or getting rid of it altogether. Because what we do, we sit in our lounge, we sit in the warmth, watching the morning news, cup of tea in one hand, toast on a plate in the other, and think, oh, my car might be cold in a minute. Let me just get my app. Okay, I've now turned the car on. And we call it preconditioning. And preconditioning, has two elements, and both of those are vital. 
The first one, obviously, is the car itself, cabin, we call it, and that's cabin heating. So from the comfort of our home, in the lounge, watching telly with a cup of tea and toast, we can turn the cabin heater on. Mine's set to 20 degrees, and we can set that up. We can either time it so the car's ready for when you're leaving, or you can just switch it on manually. It takes three or four minutes to bring the car up to temperature. So when you get in here, first of all, you've got electric seat, heated seats in most EVs. You can turn them on from the app. You've got an electric heated steering wheel, you can turn that on from the app, and you've got your cabin heaters. So when EV drivers walk out to their car in the morning, they're totally defrosted, demisted, lovely and warm and toasty. And that makes it a lovely place to sit into when the temperature, like today, is about minus four. That's the first bit. But the bit we really have to be concerned about is the battery, because that has been sat overnight, minus two, three or four centigrade, and that is amazingly cold. And it's an amazingly big lump. It weighs half a ton. And it takes a while for that to build up. So as well as preconditioning the inside of the car for our comfort, we can now get rid of one of the things which we suffer from in the winter and the cold, and that is a reduction in range, a reduction in efficiency of the battery. Because all we do when we precondition, we now also precondition the battery. And what will happen is, on this one it's heat pumps, so what will happen is the battery heaters will come on and they will gradually start building up the temperature of the battery. Now, it will take a little while. This is not two or three minutes. This is going to be 20 or 30 minutes. So you need to do this well in advance. Your handbook will tell you roughly how long it takes. And some of the upgrades over the upgrades we've had now help you with preconditioning the battery to get it at the right temperature at the right time. It, it will now give you a clue how long it's going to take. But what it does is it gets rid of the reduction in efficiency and the reduction in the power that the battery gives out. Because if you have this preconditioning for say half an hour before you set off, your battery will be now nice and warm and toasty. And guess what? It will be at full power. It will give out full power. And secondly, it will be at a much higher level of efficiency. We do not suffer the same drop in range and drop in efficiency if you precondition your battery before your journey. Now, obviously, this is all great if you're at home and you can use your home charger at the cheap rate. We're not at home anymore. We're out on the road. So we have to charge somewhere if we go beyond the range of the car to be able to get back home again. And we could choose to charge here. This is Westmoreland Charging. We're at T-Bay in the Lake District on the M6. And the charger here, oops, I'll just touch the screen. Charger here is 64 pence. And in today's world, that's actually not a bad rate. It's down the same as people like Fastned, uh, uh, below people like Ionity, way below Shell and BP Recharge. Uh, we could charge here, or we could just stroll over here. And here we have Tesla V3 chargers. Now, these are exclusive Teslas only. Sorry to say, if you haven't got a Tesla, you can't charge here. So these are the Tesla V3 chargers. So when we're out on the road, I drive a Tesla, so I'm going to talk about these, but I'll cover non-Teslas in just a moment. So as a Tesla driver, when I'm out on the road, if I haven't got enough energy to get myself back home, I'll stop and I'll always stop at one of these. Two reasons. First of all, they're much cheaper. Whatever you say, whatever charges are out there, you won't get cheaper than these. The second thing is they are much more reliable. We do not have issues with them, the same as other charger networks seem to have. These are virtually always up and running. However, in the car on the display, if there are any charges out of operation, it will actually flag it up and it will tell you uh, the 12 charges here and 11 of them are available, whatever. It also tells you the occupancy. So there's no point heading here if everyone is full and there's a big queue of cars. So we can pick our chargers in advance and make sure we pick one which has available chargers. But well before we get here, if we tell the car, tell the sat-nav that we're coming here, the car will calculate in advance 
how long it takes to get the temperature of the battery up to the correct level for the fastest charging speed. Because not only is a nice warm toasty battery better efficiency at driving, it's actually better efficiency at charging as well. It will charge faster if the battery is nice and warm. And this was the problem they had in Chicago last year, where all the cars were frozen out of the chargers. There was nothing wrong with the chargers at all. All that had happened is people had left their cars outside overnight in Chicago and it got down to minus 20 or something. The battery, I'm surprised it even got them to the charging station. But when they plugged that in, the battery was so cold that when the car communicated with the charger, they agreed the battery was too cold to charge literally too cold to charge. People thought the chargers weren't working. They were fully working, but the, the charger and the car were saying, the battery actually is too cold to charge. So what they did, and very sensibly, is the charger started supplying the electricity for the battery heaters. So they were running the car battery heaters off the charger. And unfortunately, people have got a very, very, very short attention span. When they couldn't charge immediately, they went into panic mode. The chargers aren't working, the car's broken, EVs are rubbish. Now, what actually happened, had they left the cars for about half an hour, 30, 40, 50 minutes, I don't know the exact timing, depends on the uh, outside temperature, but at a certain point, the battery heaters would have warmed up the battery enough to be able to start accepting a charge. So while the charger was providing heat to the battery heaters, it would also slowly start charging the car. And you might get five, 10, 20 kilowatts, that's all, but at least you're starting to charge. In simple terms, had they arrived at the charger station, having preconditioned their battery on the road, they would have got an instant charge, even at minus 20, 30 or 40 centigrade, because electricity works right through the winter. It's not the electricity that stops, it's the battery that stopped it. So what do we do? What we do is we precondition the battery. We do it here, it's only minus three or four at the moment, it's really chilly, but the car's been sat here for a little while, the battery will be going really cold. So any heat is generated from the drive, and it doesn't generate that much, by the way, because as fast as you're heating the battery, by getting the chemical reaction to pre produce electricity, the cold air whooshing underneath the car, just chilling it down again. So people say, oh, well, I've done a two hour drive. Battery should be nice and warm. I'll pull in here, don't need preconditioning. Wrong, wrong. Two hour drive in minus four. Your battery will be colder when you get there than when you started. So what Tesla will do, and a lot of other cars are starting to do the same, is automatically they'll switch on preconditioning. Other cars, it's manual, but you must do it. If you precondition the battery so that when you arrive at the charger location, your battery is really nice and warm, you can plug it in, it will take the maximum charge that the charger and your car agree is safe for your car. That's it, no hanging about. And Tesla do it automatically, we don't even think about it. My Tesla preconditioning came on uh, probably about 20 or 30 miles down the road. Uh, once we told it we were coming here, it, did, it determined how long it would need to precondition uh, on the way. And I noticed uh, probably 30 miles back, it came on. Uh, we told it we were coming here, uh, so I wanted to see this in action. It's quite a while. It's not five minutes. You're going to need a good 30 or 40 minutes of preconditioning. So that's the next tip. If you arrive at a charger, supercharger, Westland charger, whatever you arrive at, if your battery is stone cold, you're going to be there for a long time because even if you start getting a charge, it will be much lower charge than you can actually get out of it. And at the same time, the charger will be providing electricity for the battery heaters, and half the energy will go into the heaters until that gets up to temperature. Out on the road, why not do it? If you, as some people do, some of my viewers comment, oh yes, but if I precondition out on the road, I'm using up power, I'm using up my battery life, uh, and that's costing me money. Now, in my case, I charged up overnight at seven pence per kilowatt hour. So if I use two or three kilowatts, 20p, big deal. Because if I arrive here, having not preconditioned and my battery is stone cold, 
This will precondition my battery. This will heat my battery. And this is about 42 pence a kilowatt hour. 46, somewhere around in that region. So this is about four, five, six times the price. It will still use electricity from here to precondition my battery, to try and get the charging speed up as fast as they can. So I will pay to, to precondition my battery to heat it, whether I do it at home, whether I do it on the road, or whether I do it here. I prefer to do it if I've charged up at home with 7p, prefer to do it on the road. So you're gonna pay for preconditioning, I'd rather pay the cheaper rate. So one other tip, when you have been to a charging location or when you charge up at home and you precondition everything, it saves a huge amount of energy if you use the low cost, low energy heaters in your car. And let me give you a clue, that's not the main heater. Most EVs have heated seats, uh, I think all of them do, and an awful lot have a heated steering wheel. And if you get a nice warm seat, you get a nice warm bomb, hands are warm on the steering wheel, it actually feels uh, psychologically a lot warmer than it is. That will use a huge amount electri uh, less electricity than having the full heater on. So what I tend to do is run the cabin heat fairly low, about 18 degrees, 19 degrees. It's not chilly, but it's not really warm. And then I have a really nice heated seat that always goes on the full setting and a nice heated steering wheel as well. Keeps the power consumption down, that increases your range slightly. Uh, if you arrive at a charging station with a stone cold battery, you will be there longer. It will take ages to charge up and it's your own fault because all cars have preconditioning. Same with charging overnight, get your car uh, fully charged up in the winter because you will be using more energy and make sure you precondition the battery and the cabin before you set off. If it's not automatic, use preconditioning on the way to the charger, but allow a good half hour before you get there if you have to activate it manually. And if you use the heating cautiously, I would say, get the cabin temperature down, 60, 17, 18 degrees, whatever you feel is about as cool as you can have it, and then use plenty of seat heaters and use a heated steering wheel as well. And you'll end up with getting your range back again. But when I started the channel, it was with the point of view of trying to educate people that EVs are not as scary and bad and terrible and evil as people portray it. And that's why we call it Dave Takes It On. We do come out and we try things and we show you what can be done to make only an EV a much more enjoyable experience. We don't just tell you, we don't do research on the internet and give you all sorts of theories. We come out and we actually do it. So there we have some tips for you. EVs in the cold, it's not a bad thing. This is Chicago thing was purely down to misuse a misunderstanding of how EVs work. If I was in Chicago and it's minus 40, I would arrive at a charging station with a fully preconditioned battery, really nice and warm and toasty. And even at minus 40, I guarantee that that would charge at the same rate as it would in the summer because the battery's warm and not at minus 40. So this is down to education. So I hope this video has been of help to you. It really is simple using your car in the winter. If you do all of this, you'll get very little reduction in range and you'll have enjoyable driving the whole way. So thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, make sure you click the like button. All those likes do count for the channel. And if you'd like to see more, please click subscribe. I'm Dave.